Hi there! Here in our second intermediate video, we'll pick up where we left off last time and start assembling the pieces we made in the first video. And we'll start breathing some AI life into our spider game. We'll cover techniques for getting objects interacting with each other and moving in interesting ways. We'll also learn how to set conditions defining how games are won. So, let's start by seeing what our spider game will look like when we're finished. As you can see, our spider and enemy will move independently of each other. Then when the player taps the spider, he chases after the enemy and gives him a firm smackdown. Let's jump into assembly, then AI, and first create the starting AI for our spider. We'll start with the walking art, and then making it loop, what we're going to do is set at a location so that it appears randomly within an area. We'll define with a bounding box the area in which it appears randomly. Okay? Now for our trigger, what we'll want to do is at a specific time, and that time being exactly at 1 1, which is the beginning of the game. We'll have that be our trigger. And so moving on to action, we'll have it travel and roam. Using reflect, what the spider will do is it will roam within this area that we're defining. I also need to create AI for the enemy object to give it similar movement. It's nearly identical though to what we did for the spider, so we'll skip ahead so you can see what the game looks like with both of them moving. So now with our objects in motion, let's introduce the main mechanic of our game, which is tapping the spider and making him hunt down the enemy. So we'll create a new AI for the big spider. So with the tap trigger, and of course tapping this object, we'll make the spider travel. And the travel type this time will be target, because we want it to target the enemy. We'll set it to target just about like that, at a normal speed. Now that we have the spider targeting the enemy, we want the enemy to react appropriately when the spider gets to him. We want him to stop moving, he should appear to be roughed up by the spider, and we want it to be accompanied by a nice, brutal sound effect. So let's jump into the AI for the enemy. So this time we're going to use contact, because we want it to react when the spider hits the enemy. So touch, another object, and our spider. And so of the three things we want it to do, the first thing that we're going to have it do is we're going to have it stop its travel. And adding another action, we're also going to have it change its art. So naturally, we would select change to the KO'd art. And then finally, we talked about adding a sound effect. So let's go ahead and choose sound effect. And this slice one should work out pretty good. One thing I'm also going to do is turn on its switch. Every object has a switch that we can turn on and off as a means of communicating its status. Think of a switch like a flag that we can tell to rise and say, Yoo-hoo! Something important just happened! Switches can communicate this to other objects, and they can also be an indicator of whether or not a game has been won. So with that in mind, let's go into win conditions. Here we can choose to monitor the enemy switch and define the condition for winning the game to be when the switch turns on. So now that we're done with the AI and win conditions, we can see that everything seems to be working as it should. We tap the spider, the spider targets the enemy, and we win the game. And we can tell that the game can be won here since the enemy switch clearly turns on. Notice if we turn on the switch guide, you'll see that the enemy switch turns on. Okay, I think our game is ready to ship. So, that's it for our spider game and for our intermediate level videos. I hope you picked up some new techniques that you can put into practice in your own games. Be sure to check out the advanced level tip videos when you have a chance.